Hey. That was not James's age. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Planet Sky FF, the world where everything revolves around fifty thousand pounds. My name's Switch. It's not yours either, because I think yours starts with a four, doesn't it? What my age? Yeah, yeah, baby. I'm uh, not. I'm in my forties, forties, <laughs> but I'm aging like a fine red wine. What's your name? Uh, my name's James. What about okay. you? Okay, I said my name. How's your face? It's all right. Uh, hello, listeners. I'm back. I have missed podding this week, uh, but I am back. Yeah, it's all right. Mate. It's a bit. So it's a L- unnecessary lots of, lots of story. people are concerned for you. Really? Yes. They, Tell everyone you're okay. I'm. I'm all right. I'm going to live. Like. Uh, there are there are times where I felt like I might not, but I am going to live. Um, yeah, so uh, all good. My uh, I had to have a tooth out, as uh, as I heard on Monday's pod, but it was all good. Um, I had a nice. It was nice to listen to you guys for a change, but I did uh, I did miss the pod. But we're potting again tomorrow because we got a full set of midweek fixtures. Yeah. Although my team are playing your team, and your team are highly likely to win. Plenty so of derby tonight. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to enjoy it that much, but. You know, it's kind of one of them where we're expected to lose. We expect we're going to lose. So whatever happens, happens now. Okay, get anyway, your excuses in. we're talking about... Sky Fantasy Football. Sky Fantasy Football. How's your week? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Sitting in front of you, isn't it? Uh, well, in the sense that, obviously, my I hadn't really made a plan for this kind of period in terms of a lot of transfers that I wanted to make or needed to make. So... I went into it just like doing nothing. Okay. Literally, my my plan was let's just do nothing. Um, and when I had my tooth out on Monday, obviously my head was in the shed, so I was like, I don't even, I can't even get my head around what's happening here. So let me just deal with the problems that are in front of me now, which was one, which was Alison. So I sold Alison for Sanchez, uh, and that's the only transfer I've made since last week. I'm on 96 points. Oof. Is that good or bad? It's bad, isn't it? Because I've dropped to 10K. Well, I'm on 106 and it's bad. Okay, so 10 points behind you. I've got a few to play today. Um, on Sky, you can't really see who you captained on what day, can you? You can. You probably went Saliba Saturday against Wolves, I'm going to guess. I did, and that worked out okay. You probably went Holland against Tottenham on Sunday, I'm going to guess. Yes. Or did you go Salah? No, I did Holland. Yeah. He's sitting on 18 points. On Tuesday, you probably captained Saliba against Luton. I did, and I should have captained Martinelli. Not- At least I got Martinelli's points. About you should have captained Martinelli. Don't be silly. And then on Wednesday, you, you I presume last night, you probably captained Salah against Sheffield United. I did. Right, so I don't need to tell you I captained this week either. <laughs> so that's it, isn't I've, it? I mean, Sanchez is on 12 points at the moment. So the uh, the points that he picked me up on um, Sunday. When, when did you get my 12 points? Last night, so had penalty, mate. Ah, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, Bruno missed the penalty. Did he save the well, penalty? Actually, no, it? It, this is a legitimate save okay. rather than uh, a. So Sanchez, 12 wide. points is tidy. Uh, Colwell, nine points. Get in there, son. He scored okay, there. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, and then an assist off the Abbey. Uh, I had a goal off Martinelli yesterday, and then Salah and uh, Holland's points. Everyone else has got them as well. So, you know, nothing special. I've just, I, I think I might sell the Abbey tonight for Sun. I've got enough money to do it, and then I'll put the armband on some. I mean, if you can make that move, yeah, I can't. Give, I can't really give you a reason not to do that, unless you, you'd rather go for like Romero's back. Nah, be the I'm in a four-four-two. I'm going to stick in. I a think. Look, if if you're going to captain him today, you wouldn't Sunday. I don't think. Well, my but alternative then, is Bowen. That's all I have. But then next Friday, if you've got the captain season there, go with the offensive player. I think. Yeah. In yeah, this yeah. one, so. And I expect. Two or three, minimum two or three goals tonight from Spurs. So I've got to go with Sonny, really. So I'm going to. You've got no coverage tonight as it stands. Bowen. Yeah, there's still justification to make the transfer and capture yeah, yeah. him. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I've not used many. I'm on 34. I think that's reasonable. The, the only thing you've got to think about is obviously, I take it the RBG or Villa Sheffield United coverage, is it? At the moment, yeah. So you just want to you just want to set yourself to go up to Watkins, not this Sunday, but 100%. the next one. Like, so. he's, he's so on my radar. Or I'll obviously come off a Palace Brighton player into that on the night is a different way of doing it don't have any of them um, what's your thinking that Palace Brighton uh, well <sighs> skip no I'll tell you what it is for me it's whichever one of my dickheads gets injured in the next <laughs> 10 days that's also uh, <laughs> highly likely to happen he's going to get sold for Pascal sold for Pascal Gross and if no dickhead gets injured over that period I'll probably sell Alvarez for Pascal Gross that's, nice. that's probably the plan at the moment 
So I've actually got three million in the bank at the moment. And, Two point eight. You're richer than me. And but I'm not. I'm not spending it. I don't think. I don't think that that's the only transfer I've really got in mind now is to is to get gross in when Brighton play Arsenal. If you're thinking, oh, I could have done that last night. The only person I'd have been selling is Saliba, which I wouldn't have been that against, but I'm in a 3-4-3, so that was obviously off the table for me. Um, all the rest of my attacking players were either playing last night or tonight, so it wasn't on the table for me to make the move last night. So yeah, Pascal Gross would be the one when that comes round, and rather than Lewis Dunk on his four yellow cards or a suspended Lewis Dunk against Arsenal. No, I'll, I'll chance my arm with Gross, even more so the fact that he got rested against Chelsea on Sunday, because He's, he's the other one like Dunk that just doesn't really. He actually mm. had three shots on target as a substitute at Chelsea on Sunday, nice. believe it or not. So, yeah, he's got multiple avenues for points. I wouldn't even know where he's going to play in that one, but yeah, sure. And that also, I think the other one is that would give me a secondary in case I'm the Jared Bowen before the last game, West Ham v Brighton before overhaul. And I say last game because it might be the last game before overhaul. Uh, no Manchester City versus Brentford update. We do think there's a chance that the arrangement of the FA Cup third round games, if, say, City and Brentford's games both get moved to the Sunday, which is unlikely but possible for overseas TV coverage, it might open up Thursday the 4th of January to show City Brentford, if that's what Sky want to do. There seems like there's no reason to wait on announcing the games unless it's a TV problem. Like, what are you waiting for now? If yep. you're not going to be on TV, you know, just less than four weeks now for the fans, get it announced. Actually, that's a lie. Four, four weeks today, sorry, would be January the 4th. So it needs to it needs to happen ASAP. I've heard that there's an FA Cup third round game likely to be moved to that night on the Thursday. So I think it's not happening before overhaul, I think. Okay. It's not to say it's a definite, but I think we if if that information that I got told last night is correct, um, then it's it's not gonna happen. So we're probably down to sort of twenty five percent ish, I think, at this stage on it being before overhaul. The following midweek is a possibility, but I think in that circumstance that would possibly then maybe be the first game after overhaul if it's say Wednesday the tenth, they might do it that way. Because at least then you've got a weak window for the overhaul. Whereas if, if you moved out and that's the last game, then if Brent Burnley Luton gets brought forward to the Friday, you've only got two days. So I think if it was the following midweek, it's more likely to be the first game rather right. than the last game. Understood. So, but I think it's more likely to be when one of Champions League three midweeks for City in f- late February or early March is beginning to look more likely. Do you think if you're if you're Man City, you want to play the game or you want to hold the game back? Because now they've they've got a bit of a deficit in the league and there's a long way to go. But psychologically, they're behind. But they well, they but they will have a game in hand. So I don't know whether psychologically they'll want to keep the game in hand up their sleeve or they'll want to play it. Um, again, it might come down to TV companies. It might come down to the two clubs don't want the game. Brentford have obviously got a lot of injury issues at the moment. City have obviously got the club World Cup. You would think the the Jan- week commencing January the 8th would be the ideal time for City because Brentford won't have Tony back from suspension nor obviously have African players gone to AFCON which would include Mbumo however I would suggest on what happened to Brighton last night Bumo probably won't go to AFCON yeah he, uh, I'm glad other people f- I don't want any player to be injured but I'm glad other people are feeling the That's, pain I've felt um, with Mbumo if you've got that it's a gamble on, on the way he left the pitch I would be pretty astonished if he played at Sheffield United on Saturday so I think that's a sell to something tonight even if you think that's going a bit early you might even be blocked into midfield something like Anthony Gordon is fine if you haven't got Bowen I think to be honest pick him up because it would be useful for that captaincy right at the Judas, end if you can't afford don't hate it don't hate it uh, Brennan Johnson no, I think Brennan Johnson midfielder Kudazeski is probably a no. Basuma's over the suspension issue now. The Celso might get the odd passings here, but I don't think I, I don't think it maintained the fact he scored in the last two. So th- there'd be enough you could pick from tonight to to go into something. I think Bruno Guimaraes even will pick up the odd bit now and again. I've decided though. Uh, I want Man City to win the league and the FA Cup and the, the Champions League. They won't win it the way they played last night. They got absolutely They won't. Battered. Did you see Pep before the game in his press? So you might have been watching Sheffield United, Liverpool. 
He uh, confirmed. No, I was watching Sheffield United, Liverpool, and Crystal Palace versus Bournemouth. He confirmed. And Fulham. If they win the treble, Forest. He said, "If we win the treble, I will retire." That's a very bad Pep accent. He said he will retire if they win the treble again. He said. I will retire because he was trying to make the point that it's so unlikely that they'll do it two years in a row. But we need to get that guy out of our league, mate, to be honest, because for the last five, six years, his team have been dominating and I think the best chance that other teams have is to get rid of him. So go on, City, so win the treble and Pep, adios, so amigo. Sh- they're fourth. At the moment. Do you know how badly they got beat up last night? Do you know how many more? I'm just yeah, saying, I know do you know how badly stats. they got beat up last night? I know, night? but this time last year, they were eight points behind Arsenal. Just saying, and they won the league. They're uh, only six behind this year. Yeah, and, so, and also uh, worth it, saying, Arsenal were winning every single game. I think there which are they other teams. This year. I think there are other teams in the mix this year. It's, there's a lot more depth in quality, my and team, a lot more. My who team can goes level with them, I think, if we win tonight. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Man United are only three points behind Man City, which is the most astonishing stat you'll hear today. But it's true. My team's actually, only six actually, points behind them. If in we win fairness, tonight. Manchester United were very good last night. Actually, so we have to yeah, give them their so praise, which we'll do tomorrow. That's irrelevant. Uh, you probably want to know about my score week a little bit. One hundred and six points, sir. So not that different from you. Um, and I also bought Robert Sanchez, uh, not for the is same it, reasons. Is it you basically got Watkins and I've got Diaby? Is that what's happening here? Probably, yeah. Uh, he's, probably. He's been hurting me in this game for far too long. He's a classic example, Watkins of uh, when, you make, when, you, when you're on the wrong person here, sometimes you're like, when's the opportunity to daisy chain to get to the right player? Just pull the plaster off and fix it. And I haven't done it for too long and I need to do it. And I think that's a lesson from that is when you know patently that that's the better asset. It's not, it's not just that. Just get the, it done. The ownership's going to kill you, it's right? It's killing me. He's in 80% of the top thousand. It's thousands. killing me. It'll, be more, it'll, it'll be more than that when he plays Sheffield United as long as yeah. he's fit. Um. I bought Sanchez for Pope, which was um, the Newcastle coverage that I really wanted over this period. Um, with the money I've got in the bank, there is a case to say go and buy Kieran Trippier to give you something of it because the fixtures are really good. But he's on four yellows. Um, and there's a couple of instances where that can be added if necessary. But I, I think it probably won't be, actually. So uh, Sanchez, 12 for me. You're Shimikas owner now, aren't you? I am. You're a Saliba owner now, aren't you? I am. You're not a Pedro Porro owner, are you? I'm not. It's Colwell and Cash. I got minus one from that beauty at the weekend, but I think I might get a bit more tonight. Uh, Mo Salah, 13. Jared Bowen, shots here at the weekend, four points. Sonny's nine at Manchester City. Cole Palmer's nine last night was quite handy. Haaland, 18. Alvarez, seven. Watkins, 11. So, what bits have you had returns from that? Martinelli's one. Martinelli and Colwell. Oh, Cole scored on Sunday as well, mm. yeah. Martinelli so. and Cole will counteracted yeah. a little bit with your Cole Palmer and not, uh, Sonny. Not not a good week, though. Um, should we do captain? What's your rank then overall now? Oh, I've, I've dipped a little bit. Uh, 580. I'm like 10k, 580. So well out of it, but... 580, 30 to go. Mm. Uh, so a little dip. Uh, but to be honest, it would have been worse by the Sanchez penalty save and obviously Cole Palmer scoring mm. last night as well. So there's a couple of, let's say, relative... Differentials have pulled me a return there. Palmer's in 38% of teams. Sanchez, 25%. I do think that will really grow with Sanchez on um, Sunday from from the Everton game this week. I mean, there's a few will be making moves to to go down. Uh, captaincy this yeah, week. Yeah, so boring this conversation ever. Salah, uh, well, I'm going Sunday tonight. Assuming yeah. I buy him and he's in the team. Like uh, I cannot understand why he wouldn't be, but you never know, right? Yeah. Salah. Yep. Yeah. Holland. Holland. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I'm going to just cover it now and just, Sun. just get it done and done. We can dusty. do the week after as well if you want. Same three. Son, Holland, Salah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally using three players for the next six cats and seas. Yeah, and then it's, you come into the Palace Brighton. So, mm. yeah, we'll I think, I think you're bit. right. It's, it's best choices on probably the next five days. As it stands is uh, Son, Salah, Holland, Son, Holland, Salah. Next six days, sorry. Yeah. That's pretty much probably what it is, yeah. yeah I mean, Wolves at home for West Ham on the last day, if you fancied going Bowen or a little bit rogue, isn't too bad, but... Any any planned moves for you this N- week? No, no, no. What, you uh, on left? Barring injuries, 34. Okay, transfers. rank? 10K. It's oh, not good. Dropped. Yeah, it's just, it's not good. But it's... It's like 150 points away from 100. So I think it will take a couple of good captaincies and I'll be able to get back up to yeah, five, but, four, but five K. You, you already acknowledge and know that's not happening now, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. These ain't ones to gamble. I don't, you know, it's no. gamble against Holland versus Luton or Crystal Palace. No. no, I don't. I know people say, oh, Luton have been tough to beat at home. We're still going to see Ford or Arsenal. Yeah. So, yeah. no, it would be Holland. I think Salah Saturday. And I think, obviously, he only played 67 minutes last night. Yeah. So there's no reason to think he won't start. We'll see the team. Um, I have to say, it would be a bit up in the air of what I'd do if he wasn't in the team. I wouldn't have many other options. Shimikas would be one. Watkins and Saliba would be others. I think I'd arguably just go Watkins. Home tie. 14 home wins in the league on the bounce. I mean, they, they were absolutely brilliant last night at Villa. Mm. I think they'll find Arsenal a more difficult game. Goes Agreed. about saying, but... Yeah, you've got a bear pit there at Villa Park where they think they're going to beat anybody they play there. And, uh, and they're and capable. Why not? They've won 14 oh, league games put, in a put row. Put it this mate. way, I wouldn't expect Saliba to hit passing tiers unless Arsenal were losing. Would right. probably be my take at the moment. So that's Capsi wrapped up. For me, transfers none planned. What I would say is I'm um, Thiago Silva slash Pascal Gross are first immediate options for me to, to go to. So I think if I had an injury tonight... I would maybe just pull the, the plaster and go for that Pascal Gross move for the Brighton Burnley game Saturday. Um, that would obviously give me an alternative captaincy option to Mo as well, should he not be in the team, but we do think he will be. If I had an injury on Saturday, then I think that's Thiago Silva Sunday. And my intention right now is not to add him, but to know that there are so many opportunities where any player I get injured, that's probably where I'm going. Otherwise, I just go, with Sanchez and Palmer now, I don't need it. I don't need it, but it'll be a nice solution if I have a problem come up because I feel fairly covered for captaincy right the way through. So other than the two single game days, the, the Palace Brighton, I know Gross is my solution. Obviously, I've got Ollie Watkins on Friday the 22nd. That doesn't feel like one I need a secondary option for, i.e. could he get rotated? Not with five-day break before and another four-day break afterwards. Yeah. I don't see why he would be, so... I don't feel like I need cover for that. I've now got two Chelsea in play. So I, I would be fine running through. Even the final one, if I end up with Gross, it'd be Gross and Bowen. So I'd have two two covers everywhere for every day. And therefore, I'm probably just reacting on injuries and just leaving this be, even with the money in the bank. Trippier, as I said, is another one for me that would maybe tempt, depending on when it happens. Um, but like, you know... It, you could say, oh, I've got an injury tonight, go and buy him on Sunday. But then if he gets put to Tottenham and misses Fulham, that's shit. Yep. So is that, you, I'm not saying anyone should sell trips, of course not. But I think it's worth saying any player that you're buying at the moment, the first thing you need to do before you even look at your calendars, really, is look at the number of yellow cards. I think any player on four, you, have to, you, you almost have to assume he's going to get suspended before yep. the end at this stage. And three is dangerous as well. So that needs sense checking every time you consider making a transfer at the moment. It's another reason for me not to stress too much about it, I don't think. Cool, cool. Uh, what was the weekend like in the, obviously the first couple of days in terms of tier points? Is anything interesting coming out from any of these games or is it much of a muchness? Yeah, a few bits. Um, there were five Arsenal players who hit passing tier uh, against Wolves, but probably surprising on that. Gabriel was not one of them. And William Saliba only on 63. Tommy Asu's 61. We think he's, he's certainly going to be out to after overhaul now, which if any of you are on Ben Wyatt, that's good news. It's probably good news for Zinchenko owners as well, despite the fact he didn't start a loo. And he got 74 passes. Rice and Odegaard, 76 and 78, respectively. Two, uh, the two Wolves wingbacks both hit tackles here in the game. I know a few people picked up Cunha. We'll be absolutely delighted with, obviously, the shots here and goal at uh, Arsenal at the weekend, as it will be with, obviously, Huang's goal on Tuesday night. Shots here and a goal for Saka in that game. Uh, number of passing tiers for Brentford, which is not a common one, but against Luton, we shouldn't be too surprised. Janelt, me, Pinnock, Norgard, all tier two. Norgard tackled tier as well. It was certainly a miss for Brentford last night through suspension. Be back at the weekend to be a plus for them. From the Burnley Sheffield United game, only one passing tier, despite the fact Sheffield wow. United played more than a half with 10 men, is a major surprise. Because I just went to look and see, well, I wonder how many Jordan Bayer got. 53. Oof. Daro Shea, 60. And the irony it's just of, crept in. The irony of irony with Jordan Bayer, cast your mind back two months 
and we said he might be really useful for Wolves away. <laughs> He got his fifth yellow card on Saturday and missed the game anyway. Don't <laughs> regret that you sold him. Um, nothing unsurprisingly for Sheffield United of note in the game. There were some passes for Forest players against Everton. Murillo, uh, Aurier and Mangala. Murillo had a bit of a head meltdown in that game last night. I'll talk about it tomorrow. Uh, Dwight McNeil shots here. The only, the only for tier for Everton. Uh, no passing tiers in the Newcastle Manchester United game on Saturday, which is probably surprising on, for those who watched the game. Yeah, it felt like Newcastle were yeah. so in control. Trippier and Gomez 56 passes the most. Gomez hit tackle tier. Anti Gordon goal and shot tier. Uh, Anana saved tier. Dallo tackle tier. Uh, Diogo Carlos and Douglas Luiz hit passing tier for Villa at Bournemouth. Contra and Tielemans in tackles. Martinez five saves. Ticking over quite nicely at the moment, Emmy Martinez. Semenyo and Solanke shot tier for Bournemouth. Ryan Christie six tackles. Playing well for Bournemouth at the moment. For Chelsea, uh, seven saves for Chan- Sanchez on Sunday. At least give us something, despite the two goals conceded. Yep. Enzo Fernandez, three shots on target, two goals. I, I want to say they were his first goals for Chelsea, I think. This season? Um, no, I, just, I think just his first goals, I think. Okay. I think. M- maybe, I might have that I wrong. Think he scored a penalty or two last season. He said, missed a penalty at you, didn't he? I don't know if he scored one last year. I feel like he must have scored one. Can't, there was all the debate of whether he was on pens. Can't anyway. recall. Uh, for Brighton, Julio, Van Heck and Gilmore, tier two passing. As mentioned, Pascal Gross on on 57 minutes and had three shots on target. Liverpool-Fulham game, Virgil van Dijk, 90 passes. Joel Massett was on 52 when replaced with 20 minutes to go and his football season is over. ACL injury mm. might make Ibrahima Kanate an interesting one, I think, particularly after overhaul rather than before. They were saying uh, his contract's up at the end of the summer, as well, at the end of the season Matic, as well. Yeah, it's every it chance he, he, he won't play Liverpool for them again. career done as yeah. opposed to season done. Yeah, shame that. Don't wish that on anyone. Mm, no. um, Burnt Leno, own goal, four goals conceded, but also nine saves and obviously did pick up a um, clean sheet last night. Anthony Robinson and Paulinho in the tackles. Never a surprise to see Paulinho there. Trent only 66 passes. Saboslai two shots on target. Luis Diaz four. Only the assist for Mo Salah. Uh, from West Ham Palace, can you guess the one player it passed in tier surge? From West Ham Palace, uh, Anderson or Gahey? So let's go Anderson. Nair for Gued, 69. Jockey Ooh. Anderson was 59 and four tackles one. Uh, Chris Richards played in midfield for Palace last night as well as on Sunday. Five tackles one. There was a shot here for Jared Bowen. Who had the most passes in the Manchester City Tottenham game, Suj? Ooh. It's, it's by a distance. I'll tell you the number was 80. Is it defender? Yes. Man see Diaz. No. Uh, not Ben Davis. Ben no. Davis. No. Porro. No. Okay, give up. Uh, it's the Royal King, Emerson Royal. 80 passes. And that's because City... Let si- him have the ball. Well, it wasn't the case that they let him have the ball. It was the one intent on push it, pressing Press Tottenham him. until yeah. the ball went to Emerson Royal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it kept going to him. Um, nearly double Ben Davis number. Don't take too much notice of that. That's a one-off. Romero will almost definitely come in for Royal tonight. Manchester City's passing numbers. Rodri, 69. Walker, 66. Diaz, 61. On the low side. Uh, it's only tier one and the yellow card for Rodri, which obviously meant he was suspended last night. Uh, On to the midweek games. Uh, Gomez and Dawson. With tier one passing, uh, Max Kilman uh, owners have, have been unlucky again. Sure, you got the clean sheet this time, but yellow card and only 50 passes completed. Um, moment of silence for Jose Sar owners, because obviously he didn't play last night. Uh, Bentley played in goal and kept a clean sheet. Made two very good saves in the first half, but that was about his lot, really. Uh, nothing in terms of the passings here for Burnley players. Ekdal, who covered for Bayer at centre-back, 54 passes completed. Uh, from the Luton-Arsenal game, again, the number's not massive for the Arsenal players at the back. Gabriel, 60 at Luton is surprising. Saliba higher, 83. Declan Rice, 72. Martin Odegaard with a pass in tier, tier one with 60. Worth it saying, didn't obviously. feel like Gabriel was that involved in the game, if I'm honest with you. Um, Particularly the first half an hour. I had to, I had to actually 
pull up the app and check is he playing in the t- is he in the team because I didn't hear his name mentioned that much so maybe they were just consciously going through Saliba well, they had a lot of the ball obviously but I mean yeah. this is a common theme now that Saliba is getting more than Gabriel, Gabriel. It's, it's, it's a regular now it's because commonly didn't happen obviously so much on Tuesday night but Zinchenko obviously comes off the left into midfield so Saliba becomes the middle one he's always going to end up with more because from either side they'll just go into Saliba right whereas Gabriel's back to Saliba or going forward um, shots here for Jesus and Gabriel Martinelli. Just the assist for Bukayo Saka, captain us. Uh, Brighton against Brentford. Passing numbers a little on the low side. Be interesting to check what the minutes in play was for this. Julio, 77. Van Heck, no passings here. Only 58 passes. Billy Gilmore, 72. Beleba, 61. You're going to ask about Pascal Gross, aren't you? 58. On the borderline, Adinga and João Pedro with shots here and assist for Karim Matoma. Uh, Mark Gay, 78 passes last night against Bournemouth. Guess the jockey man, the Sunsuj? 52. 34. Ooh, low. Not even half of Mark Gay. So there's something there tactically in the game to potentially have a look at. And Ryan Christie, six tackles again for Bournemouth. So there's 12 tackles in the last two games. I'm not suggesting you go there, but it might be one later in the season to keep more of an 6. eye on. 6.7. Yeah, he's, playing, a good run. Well, he's now playing in a, in a pivot role. So he's playing deeper. So he's seen more of the ball um, and he's winning plenty of it as well. So him and Cook now look like they've established themselves as the first choice in Bournemouth midfield. Doing a great run, right? Really good. Four Thir- out of five, is it? 13 points on their last six. Yeah. They will give Manchester United a better game on Saturday than Chelsea gave them last night. Mm. Uh, Fulham, Knight and Forest. Forest got absolutely slapped Battered. pretty badly. Um, if you're thinking it was a counter-attacking masterclass, 98 passes completed for Tom Kearney. Calvin Bassey, 84, played left-sided centre-back for the first time. Tim Ream didn't start. Tossing Adarubayo back in the team, 74 passes completed. Andreas Pereira, tier one passing, so 61. Yeah, that's crazy. Raul Jimenez, Alex Awobi, two goals apiece and shot tier, obviously. Just the seven tackles, one for Paulinho, usual night at the office. Four tackles, one for Anthony Robinson. It's not, uh, it's not going to happen every week that for Fulham though, let's be honest. No, but what I'm saying is it's not like they put on a counter-attack no, masterclass they, they, they dominated. just completely dominated, dominated them. them. Yeah, dominated them. Um, We'll have more of a chat about Forrest tomorrow because I don't think that's interesting from a Sky perspective. No. Uh, for Sheffield United, uh, Souza, Bogle and McAtee all with tier two passing. Uh, interestingly for Sheffield United, um, back four last night. I'm loving uh, Arnil Omihodzic playing centre-back and only completing seven passes for Sheffield United. It's quite an interesting one. But only two Liverpool players completed passing. Ver- uh, Trent Alexander-Arnold missed out 59 despite the assist and obviously clean sheet. Canate 98, Van Dijk 83. Van Dijk obviously scored, shot tier as well, so a really good haul. Uh, Canate also hit uh, won tackles as well. 19 points, really good haul. That's the Massive stuff, of, stuff of legends, I think right? it was, um, I think it was Morpheus, Morpheus Fire hit it. Yeah. He was asking me about hop on, hop off of buying Van Dyke on Sunday um, for the three games, I think, and then selling again. Um, he's obviously hauled last night. I don't know if he did it or not. But if he did, well done. But he needed that sort of thing, I think, to be worthwhile for the two transfers for just the three games. But well yeah. done, you've got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, shots here from Mo Salah. Villa Man City last night. Ruben Diaz, 94 passes, was the only Manchester City player to hit Tieran. Um, Josko Gvardiol, eight tackles, one. Manchester City's best player. Paul got a shot, too. Uh, he did in the same attack. That was Manchester City's two shots mm. from one attack. <laughs> Man City's best player last night, by a distance, was Edison. Edison. Six saves. Yeah. I think that was over 25% of his saves this season. Mad. Uh, for Villa, uh, John McGinn, six tackles. Leon Bailey, three shots on target. Diego Carlos, 54 passes, one. There's a little trend there with him, but he's not established... In, uh, he's establishing himself in the team, but Pau Torres is the safer one to go for if you are looking at Villa defensive coverage. And there's a few Matty Cash owners who I think are probably looking at sell at the moment. Uh, finally, for Manchester United, Chelsea last night, Scott McTominay, five shots on target. Um, 
and it should have been a sixth in that as well. Two goals scored. Uh, Sofian Amrabat tackles one. Seven saves for Sanchez to go with his penalty save. Thiago Silva, 65 passes completed. Axel Disasai, 81. Moises Casado, 1-6 tackles. They were well beaten. Man, that was Manchester United's best performance of the season. Yep. Good, good. Uh, there are a number of questions that we've had in on X.com, James, and they referred to some of the stuff that I wanted to ask you whilst we we're going through the tiering points and stuff, which I think would help us get through the conversation. There's a number of players there that yeah, are in and around the fringes that considering. Um, so let's get into them, shall we? Go. AD Tor says, cash to Romero tonight, or would you move Diaby on now? So, cash you didn't play yesterday. Is he out of the team? Because Leon Bailey started, Diaby came off the bench. Are we seeing a change? But I also felt like the way that the formation had been set up was specifically for Man City as so opposed to, I don't feel like... The same player... They'll probably do the same thing for the, Arsenal. This will but, sound weird, but the same player is affecting both of those players, and it's Leon Bailey, mm. who I said when he came on against us was, was great. Yeah. Then he played well again at the weekend and scored. He was excellent again last night. Now, with Leon Bailey... He'll get injured in the next couple of weeks. <laughs> but I think the right answer on those two players is to sell both. I think. Because um, you're delaying the inevitable. I think, as it would stand, subject to limbs afterwards, and it's worth saying Bailey was limping towards the end of yeah. the game. But I would, he'll pick the same team, I think. If he can pick the same team against Arsenal, pick the same team. So, But if, if Bailey did get injured... Weirdly, you might find that Cash and Diaby both come back into the team. And they'll definitely get minutes. Like, Diaby will, will play at some he point. He's, he's not yesterday. like he's jettisoned or anything like that. Matty Cash is very unlikely to play against Arsenal uh, as it stands. But if, if Bailey has a problem, Cash will come into the team. I think they're sales because I, I, I don't think they're established in the sense you could look at the fiction and go, yeah, well, after Arsenal, they'll definitely play all four anyway, even if a Bailey was injured. So... I think it's a sell. If you haven't got Watkins, part of your moves needs to be to tee that up to get that in on Sunday the 10th. Is that right? Sunday the 10th? No, it's not. It's sorry. Sun uh, Sunday the 17th. Sorry. I wouldn't like break it. You wouldn't it. wait till Friday the 22nd? No, no, you get him in for Brentford away, don't you? Okay. There's got to be something there you can sell. Yeah, see, for me right now, I'm looking at um, Spurs have got three games. West Ham at home, Newcastle at home, Forest away. I can daisy chain that on. To, so I could get three games to Sun, move that on to Watkins, who will have Brentford, Sheffield United, Man United. You've only got the Everton game in that time period. But to be honest, even if you want to do a hokey cokey over those three games, which would include the Sheffield United captaincy as a minimum, so for Watkins, four for zero over Holland. Yeah, that's also true. So you know, like if you're sh if you're stuck for the, there's no reason not to go there. So even if you're stuck for the money, that's an option for you. Yep. And it's two transfers, but then as opposed to say the Van Dijk one. You're looking there and going, oh, well, the power alone of the Sheffield United game could make it's that huge. worthwhile, yeah. right? So, Well, yeah. I mean, Sheffield United were, I, I, I hate, I really don't all, want to use the word better yesterday. Being, and then if you bring Haaland back in, you're bringing him back in for two captaincies yeah. as well. So I did think yesterday, legit, the effort, like when they played against us, I thought they were pathetic in terms of work rate and effort. I thought yesterday... They tried a lot harder, Sheffield United. I would have changed the, the manager. Quality they, so. wasn't the quality in the final third. You were a bit uh, suspect. Listen, they might have a little bounce, but the but effort it, was better. There's still no not wanting Ollie Watkins for that night. Hundred percent, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a single uh, game day, and he's the captain that you need that's, for that day. As long as he's fit for that game, that's as close as you get to essential in this. Really, for a single game day. The only thing I would say to AD is, I don't want to buy Romero today because I don't trust him. Not in a London derby against us where obviously the uh, temperature will be turned up. Like if Antonio starts today, which I think he might. I Antonio's feel like, not fit, mate. Is he not? No. I thought, uh, I thought I heard him on the pod saying he was looking to try and get back the other day. Anyway. It, even if he, he won't start anyway, no yeah, chance. I just feel like regardless of quality gap, it's an intense game and I don't trust Romero not to lose his head again. I just... I do, actually. He's been better, I get it, but then he fucked up the other no, day, didn't I he? I do. Let, let, let's look at this realistically. In that moment against Chelsea, he's been an idiot. It's not like a, or an overly aggressive tackle in the sense of he's gone to hurt the opponent, right? It's not on. It's definitely a red card. He will have been sitting there thinking about that for a month. 
He hasn't played for a month, Serge. Yeah, but I, I, I so, just can't but trust him. And look at the results the team's had without him. So he knows he's let everyone down. And yeah, with true. Van der Ven's injury, can't, he can't do it. So can I, am I going to sit here and say Romero definitely can't get sent off? No, because he'll be aggressive in the tackle. What I'm telling you is he won't do something stupid like that. Okay. He won't. He will have been told. And I f- to be honest, I think it's one. You look at the results of the team, you go, oh, I can't do that. I'm letting everyone down. So, yeah, Romero's an obvious one uh, from that perspective. In terms of moving Diaby on, um, something like Anthony Gordon is obviously decent. If you've got money in the bank, um, obviously Son, if you can get there. I'd probably write, uh, Son's obvious, yeah. Uh, Bowen, obviously. It's, and yeah, go tonight, by the way. Go go for it. Um, I'd probably prefer, if you if you if you're in a situation we're looking at two Tottenham, I'd almost for the minute, it's sound mental this, I'd almost rather you just went Romero and Porro. So, AR says, thoughts on double Spurs defence? <laughs> Starting with West Ham at home, up to overhaul. Do Romero and Porro outscore Saliba up to overhaul? Thanks for the content this year, gents. My pleasure, buddy. No, I, I have no thought of moving that. And again, that's... Uh, what price is Porro? It's 7 8 same. Same as Romero. Pound for yeah. pound. R- Romero's the one of the two in this format, I think, still, because it's the guarantee. There's um, a little bit more wild unpredictability about Pedro Porro. So, look, if you're aiming more for wildness and understand that it could be a two-pointer, then Porro's your guy. Romero, you he, if he plays 90 minutes, it's, it'll be close to under passes tonight, I should imagine. Um, I don't hate it, but I wouldn't move Saliba on. My thoughts on Saliba are, you look at the next three and you go, Villa, Brighton, Liverpool. Uh, but we've seen before take Manchester City at home as an example, where sometimes in some of the bigger games... You'll get a low-scoring encounter. They very nearly kept a clean sheet at Newcastle, remember? So there could be that. Passing tiers probably won't be there in the game, so that feels a bit shit. But he offers a really good captaincy cover for the last two games, the West Ham and Fulham games, before overhaul. And so, therefore, I'd kick myself. Having already sold him once this season and regretted it, I'd kick myself if I sold him and Son got injured in the meantime because I'd be thinking the first thing I'd be thinking is I need to get Saliba back for those two games that's okay. what I'd be thinking um, so no I think for me that's going to stay do I think like Thiago Silva outscores him over that period yeah does he outscore him as an example I'm talking about making the move Sunday as an example do I think he outscores him enough to make the transfer worthwhile probably yes actually but that could fall apart and Saliba will play one more game than Silva in terms of Romero how much Romero would outscore Thiago Sil- uh, Saliba over that period is dependent on how many clean sheets Tottenham get in there. Because what I would say is, of the six games Tottenham oh. have got... You right there, pal? Fly, yeah, the there head. is one fly in here that's absolutely triggered and drunk, by Which the way. Which one we have downstairs? Nico, what? I'll let Nico say. Uh, oh, look, here he is. We've got an electric uh, tennis racket. You know, you can just oh, squat bring, We'll bring that up later. Yeah, we'll have, we'll have some um, fun later with that. Would, wouldn't kill a fly here on Planet Sky FF. We uh, would. Romero will pick up passing tier in five of the six games. Even Newcastle Sunday, I'd be really surprised if he didn't get it. All them games, he'll hit passing tier, bar Brighton away. And to be honest, I wouldn't even be shocked if he got it at Brighton, you know. So you're, you're looking there at putting, say, 30 points on the board, whereas expectation on Saliba over that period... 10 for the two passing in the last two, plus a couple of clean sheets. That's what I'm saying. Depends how many Tottenham get. So, look, there's definitely upside in doing it. If you've, if you've got neither Romero or Porro, I'd probably do it. Having made my bed with Porro the other week, I'm, I'm obviously going to let Romero go, I think. Uh, John Wayne transferred him uh, Bomo for dunk last week. And now, obviously, he's injured. Well, we don't know the full prognosis, but it doesn't look good. Would you keep or... Move to Gross or Bowen. He's also looking at Shimakas to dunk. It's worth saying, by the way, just thinking about it. Obviously, if you did go Saliba to Romero, that would give you cover for Sun as well. Would it go who to dunk? And Bowen, no, you got to listen, James. Sorry. I, got, I distracted myself because I was thinking, do you know what it was? I sat down and went, maybe I will still go Romero tonight. <laughs> I couldn't get it out of my head. <laughs> uh, Bomo, he got bought and Bomo for dunk last week. Obviously, He's injured now. Would you keep him or move him to Gross or Bowen? Bearing in mind, he's also looking at Simicass back to dunk. 
I don't know when he's going to do Simicass the dunk. What's the best entry point for that? I would, if I was a Bumo owner and I wanted Jared Bowen, yeah, I would, I would do that tonight. Get it done. Yeah, I would do that. To, I, I would be staggered if Bumo played at the weekend. And to be honest, my prediction right now is you won't see him on this side of overhaul. And then they've only got Aston Villa, and then the Villa game. There's I, a big I, gap. I don't think you see him in any of them. I don't think he'll yeah. play for till next year. So I'd get that done personally. I'm not a doctor. I just saw what I saw with my eyes last night. Uh, on dunk, the, the, here's the problem. And we've spoken about this. So you want to get dunk back on probably the Sunday game against Arsenal, right? Sunday the 17th. Right, so he either gets boots against Burnley and he's suspended for Arsenal, so then there's no point. Or he doesn't get boots against Burnley and then you buy him for Arsenal knowing that he could get boots and then suspended for the one that matters most against Crystal Palace. You can't buy Lewis Dunk on that day. Can't. Yeah, agreed. It's, it's a nightmare. And agreed. that's why, for me, that's right out now. They haven't kept a clean sheet all season. Pascal Gross is well capable as an alternative. He's an all-rounder. Yeah. So, like, if you want to buy a dunk on the night when Palace play Brighton, because you think there's enough upside in that on the captaincy, like, be my guess. I'm just saying right now, you can't buy him for that Arsenal game. You're going to kick yourself mad if he gets booked in that. And let's be honest, it's not the sort of game that you can't get booked in, right? You can't, you can't buy him on that Sunday. Now, if you've got an injury, then you could make the case. Burnley at home, okay, that could be a 10-pointer. Like, go and buy him Saturday. But same thing, I think. I just, I just wouldn't buy him at the moment. What's your thoughts on after the City Palace game in a couple of weeks? Streaky saying, uh, would you take out Holland and any other City players or do you have different plans? Trent is an option for me. Um, you can definitely get some three for ones, four for ones. Yeah, two I mean, for Trent, ones Trent's there. another one. You certainly get the three for zero. Um, with with that, that's more of a maybe go back. I mean, you could always take the view as long as you leave money in the bank that over that period is there definitely going to be someone after Boxing Day you maybe want to come off to go back to Holland for two captaincies. Sure, you get three Liverpool games. I think for two me of them as well, Anfield. I always had a, a thought at the end that I'd want more than just Holland and Alvarez because the Brentford game. But now I'm leaning into thinking it's not going to happen. Even that night against Everton, I see the team Wednesday 27th. There's no reason to think he wouldn't play. But if he didn't, would I rather captain a Chelsea player at home to Crystal Palace or a different Man City player at Everton? I'd probably just go to Chelsea player. Because you'll see the team. If Holland got injured and missed Sheffield United on Saturday the 30th, would I be happy to captain a Chelsea player at Luton? Yeah, I would. Same, same thing. So, I don't think I need the second City player. I think you, you'll still want to go back because Everton and Sheffield United have enough massive haul potential. He's clearly the outstanding captaincy option for those two. But yeah, I mean, selling Haaland for any player on Sunday the 17th is not any player, but you know what, what I mean. Any, any player that's got the three games, I think, 17th, then the, the next weekend and then Boxing Day... Is every case to say go and do it? Cool. Any other city player? I think there is at the moment. It's been so. That's what I'm saying. Alvarez de Gross for me. Uh, Dirk Digger is Ariola a keep until overhaul now? Um, y- yeah, he that. I- no, he is because there isn't even a there isn't a sell point. Your only sell point is to Sanchez on Christmas Eve. And unless, unless you've got no Chelsea coverage, I, I don't particularly think that's necessarily worth it. Oh, my face is itching, mate. Sorry, uh, mate. That's all right. <laughs> Jimmy K, for those on Tim Ream, would you go Romero or Porro now or go early on dunk on Saturday ready for the Palace captaincy? I've talked myself into Shimikas to Romero tonight, possibly, I think, while I'm doing this podcast. Um, no, I would, I would go Romero of the two. Romero, you know, it, it's like the old Rodri Foden. I know what Foden's ceiling could be. Yeah, but I know what Rodri's going to do. Yeah, Romero. Yeah, I, I have to agree, even though I don't madly trust him. Uh, right. If you've only got one Tottenham player, I think he's an almost definite get tonight. And last but not least, James, we've got a question from Adam Byram. Own both VVD and Trent. Which one would you lose for Sun? Hmm. Same thing in, in the sense that VVD's got a little bit more guaranteed. Trent's not miles off him, but he seems to be... He's ju- taking he the be, corners and stuff. Yesterday, be, there was the sec- The goal came from a corner. V- 
Van, Van Dijk had another chance from a corner. Yeah. Salah had that shot so, from a well, corner. Yeah, so he's crossing new so many attempts, Van Dijk. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, that was VVD's first goal for a while, though. I would keep Trent because I get sucked into the upside of big returns. The sensible answer might be VVD, though. Ah. It's also to factor into that as well, possibly no captaincy in that assuming you've got Mo, but I do like the idea of having the secondary Liverpool. Oh, that's mad. Coach. Trent, Trent's on a little run now, isn't he? Yeah, and he's he can, on a little he, run. He can be streaking. The confidence is in there and he's take, he's, he's trying things and um, I think having Kanate there alongside him was helpful yesterday because Kanate had a good game. Uh, I'd keep Trent, but I don't know if that's a sensible option or not. I, can I be honest with you? I wouldn't be keen on selling either at this minute in time. After yeah. Palace, maybe, but I get you're going to want Sun probably for captaincy tonight. I, I get that. I'm assuming Adam doesn't have a captaincy coverage for tonight. I would guess so. I mean, even maybe he does, but Sun, I think, is to stand out tonight. Explosive potential. Um, oh, that's real tough, that. Uh, Steve Cheek. Didn't answer it. <laughs> I'm going Trent. I, I would toss a coin. Ah, oh, do you know what I would? I would think Van Dyke just got his goal selling. There you go. Uh, Steve Cheek. Actually, there was one more question, James. I did say Adam was going to be the last question. I didn't realise Steve's questions there. And Steve said, "I hope Sidgers recover him from his two vicious." I've got to ask you a question. Answer your question, Steve. And he's a West Ham fan. Even with Chelsea's nice run of fixtures, they are not really an option, are they? Uh, yeah, to go yeah, heavily, they, except maybe for Sanchez. Oh, heavily, no. Um, and the thing is, you can't go blanket defensive because you don't know who they're going to play. Gonna play. I mean, San- Palmer's Sanchez, all right as a filler because be he's you, cheap. When Pope got injured, I think I decided on Sanchez in about two seconds. Yeah, um, there wasn't really much to think about from that. You could go, oh well, Sunday bright before Brighton and Man United wasn't the right time, but I knew that was going to cancel all the headaches of having some sort of Chelsea defensive coverage. I still think Thiago Silva is the best one to get. I don't think he'll play all five games. I think there's every chance he misses Palace at home or Luton away at the end. Um, but he should play the Wolves one, which is the one you'll be worried about the most. That said, he has had a couple of sloppy displays recently, last night and at Newcastle a couple of weeks ago. But I think that would be the one. The rest is an absolute it's a mystery still in terms of who will make up that back line. I mean, he's played Cucurella right back last night. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a mess. Colwell looks like he's going to probably play left back when he plays, so there's nothing in that from Parsons here. Badia Shield and Dissa side has every chance they're going to share minutes. Rich James on this format, I just think it's not an option at the moment. So I think like you can go in. Not heavy. Like Raheem Sterling's on four yellows as well. It's like, yeah, it's not, not that one would that be I'm a good differential to consider. That doesn't feel like it's on the table because of that. Particularly, you know, if you got put to Everton on Sunday, Mrs. Sheffield United, you're gutted. So I think Palmer enables perfectly. Um, and I think Sanchez and Silva are the other two really at the moment. Otherwise, the rest is off the table for me. Listeners, thank you for tuning in to this episode of Planet Sky FF and viewers because they uh, watch on the old YouTube. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thanks for grinning and bearing with uh, a little, of, a little <laughs> bit of uh, uh, mealy mouthness, but we're there in the end. If Welcome you want to support back, the boss. show, head over to patreon.com forward slash planet FPL. Um, there's loads of different tiers you can join. You get additional content, you get ad free podcasts if the ads annoy you. You get. Um, prize leagues you get james's fixture planning spreadsheet slack channel a whole community of hundreds of really cool engaged fantasy managers um and it's christmas and if you want to support us at christmas you know always helps doesn't it james yeah of course it does tomorrow we will review the rest of the game week uh yes we will from an fpl point of view it's a full pod going out we'll review the games ready for another quick turnaround before we've got another weekend of fixtures as well so wherever you're listening make sure you're subscribed and you'll get notified when that goes live uh, and we'll have the diff show out for patreons tomorrow for the patrons today james you're streaming and uh, yeah q and a a live stream for basic plus and above at three o'clock today um just one for a a, a free for one discussion just to throw at you go uh, on before we finish i know we've spoken a lot about buying Watkins subject to where you're at he might be a right filler to sell 
And what I mean by that is you could make a move tonight for a Tottenham or a Newcastle player. Play, take the Thursday night game. You miss Watkins against Arsenal, which might feel dangerous based on what you saw last night. But on a selling of a three for one, that's not bad. You've got obviously the two teams play each other Sunday. And then obviously you've got the Tottenham Friday night against Forest or Newcastle against Fulham on the Saturday, then go back on the Sunday. You can even then, if you wanted, in both case scenarios with Tottenham and Newcastle, take the Brentford Sheffield United games and then flip it back to either again on the Saturday, who play Luton and Everton respectively. So if you are struggling for a real captaincy at the moment for some of the forthcoming days, Ollie Watkins hokey cokey actually might be the one that solves the problem. I won't be doing it. No. Uh, listeners, thanks again. Stay safe. Look after yourselves. Back at you tomorrow. Ciao for now. Thanks, everyone. Play it your way. Cue music, please. Man child. Yes, Nico. What are you saying, baby girl?